I'm going to show you a little bit about how I make these deer antler saddles. You can see by a cross section here of the ends that they're not all created equal. This it should be fairly obvious to you that this one is much more porous in the center than this one is. This one has a real thick outer edge of hard material. So we're going to use this one. I'm not going to use this one. This one could be used for guitar saddles because it's thinner and we'll just use the outside edge of it. Okay, you can see that I'm working on four saddle blanks at the moment and what I've done is cut a notch in them so you can see where the these would be where the wheels will ride on the sat on the bridge little adjustment wheels and so the next operation is we have to drill holes in these and I have a little jig made up for drilling these holes we're here at the drill press and uh, I have this jig made up for uh, drilling these holes. Um, there's a solid side of every saddle and there's a porous side of every saddle. The solid side has to go in like this and then I, by eye I literally line it up with the drill guides that are on here and uh, you know make sure that it's even and then I just hold it very tightly with my hands so I've got it just right. Well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before that, I take, I run the, the drill down through the drill guide. This uh, double, or this single edge razor blade, I use the thick part of it, the handle part of it, and put it under there as a stop. Then I adjust my stop on my drill press to stop at that spot right there so that I don't drill all the way through. That way it'll stop just before it drills all the way through the antler. And uh, again, I gotta line it back up and line it up by eye. Once I get it lined up, I just hold it there with my thumb real tight. see how it drills the holes in there. The next operation, I just round the ends off. I just do it on the disc sander, and I do it by eye. Um, the idea is you don't take anything off the end, you round the corners to the end. And so if you do it like that, you pretty much get them equal. Brother John he is a poor, hard-working man. His life was hard. But he does the best he can, he prays to God 
Just to thank him for his bread And a roof over his head Brother John Lost his wife When the fever came around The gentle girl Oh, he laid her in the ground All four of them have been rounded now And now that sets them up to be held in the jig that cuts the angles on them all right, here's my jig that I've made for the bandsaw. It's, you can see there's a big aluminum plate here. There's some bearings. There's this spindle here. And you can see that the pattern is on this side and the new deer antler blank is on this side. The blade on the bandsaw is right here. Um, and this is the follower. So basically we run the pattern along this follower here and the bandsaw blade cuts the pattern into this it you know this measurement here has to be very precise between this follower and the bandsaw blade and you have to move this in the I, this rides in the uh, slot and you have to move it into the right place um, it's a little bit of trial and error on this so the first one I cut is uh, usually cut a little light and then I'll move it in maybe and cut just a little bit more off of it but we'll go ahead and try cutting one now. he fell beside his plow brother John Trouble on earth is ending All your sorrows soon will be gone You're a good man I can tell by looking that that's going to be shallow so I'm going to have to move it in that way a little bit. What I just do is I'll just take a draw pencil line across here and I can use that by eye to just judge how far I'm moving it in. I have to loosen up these clamps that are on here and then I just slide it in just a little bit. Doesn't take a lot to make a difference. Trouble on earth is ending. All your sorrow soon will be gone. You were a good man. You did all you could and they're calling you home now, Brother John. go a little more. I've tried putting permanent marks on here to, so that I get it in the right place every time, but the problem with that is when you put a different blade on or the blade will move in and out, it's, it's, a, you know, it's just not that precise, so you just have to do it a little bit by trial and error, unfortunately. Try that one again. It's looking better but I still need it just a hair more in and you know it's just better to sneak up on it than it is to try to get it all at once. Where danger silently creeps and storms so violently creep you're drifting to fall. Okay, that's looking much better. I believe we can live with that one. They go on the pegs fairly tightly, so I just take a screwdriver and lightly pry up on them to just so I don't break something. And then what I'll do is I'll cut that side of all of them first. And uh, I'm also very careful when I put them on here to know which side I want facing forward on the mandolin, so I put them on in a specific direction every time. I'm going to adjust the saw so that the blade tracks back just a hair further. It, it goes back to the bearing, but right now it's not sitting on the bearing real good. It's back on the bearing now, so that makes it a little better to, for cutting. Too far from the shore Drifting too far from the shore The original jig like this that I made 
was made out of uh, wood and uh, it was pretty good but it wasn't as precise so I had a machine shop make this for me years ago I could actually make it in my own machine shop now but uh, you know there's no point obviously okay now we just turn we turn the pattern around and we'll turn each one of these around and cut the other side Mercy's abundantly and when I cut the second side I can tell that I'm still not quite deep enough and I'm gonna go ahead and move it in just another fraction it's a, a difficult thing to get it exactly right satisfied with the way it's cutting now. We'll cut the rest of them. Jesus today, let him show you the way. You're drifting too far from the shore. You can see it does a pretty darn good job. Now it just takes a little bit, just a tiny amount of hand filing to fix them up the rest of the way. Here's what the finished product looks like on a uh, bridge. And you can see there's the adjustment wheels there. And uh, that would raise the saddle up and down in relation to the bridge and in relation to the top of the mandolin. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.